Welcome to Sports Extra. I'm your host, Ali Gohar. We've got a lot to tackle today, but we'll begin with cricket. The Pakistanis are in New Zealand, as everybody knows. Uh, they've had a little bit of practice. They've played some uh, intra-squad matches, some scenario T20s, and they'll need all the practice that they can get against the New Zealanders. Remember, they were uh, in isolation for quite some time. Misbah was worried about the fact that they weren't getting enough practice. But you can see on your screen there in this beautiful place called uh, Queensdown, they managed to get uh, some good workouts in, some good knocks out in the middle. And uh, as I said before, the New Zealanders are looking very, very good. They beat the West Indians in the T20 series. And I wouldn't be surprised if they smash them in the test series. They're, all, they were, they're already 1-0 uh, up. And in the second test match, uh, they're well on top. So we'll discuss Pakistan's uh, tour to New Zealand first. Uh, then in our second segment, we'll discuss something a little bit different, sailing. Uh, sailing is something that I've always been um, fascinated by, but also it just seems to be extremely difficult and intimidating. And uh, sailing in this part of the world has been going on for a very, very long time, since 1932, before partition, and it's still continuing. The Pakistan Navy, uh, the Pakistan Navy won a national sailing competition, the National Sailing Race Championship in 2020, which was organized by the Pakistan Navy Aquatic Club in Karachi. So we'll discuss sailing and then we'll also talk about our final segment will be uh, on mountains, uh, International Mountain Day. And we all know that Pakistan have uh, some stunning mountains and K2 is one of the most uh, sought after for uh, mountaineers. It's the most difficult mountain in the world, many say it. Actually, it's definitely the most difficult mountain in the world. There's a reason why it's called uh, Killer Mountain. And Pakistan, the northern areas are absolutely stunning and it's very, very important that we uh, continue to look after them. Climate change continues to be a risk, so that's something that we need to look, out, uh, look at very, very carefully. That's why our climate policy, uh, adjusting and rectifying our climate policy is extremely important. But first, we're going to have cricket with uh, my guest who's joined us on Skype, uh, senior cricket analyst Lina Moin Aziz. Lina, Aslam Alaikum. Walaikum salam Ali, how are you? I hope I hope all is good with you and your family and everyone around you. Well, when I heard you were the uh, you were you'd be my guest for cricket, I said thank God because I love love talking <laughs> cricket with you. We can continue for hours and hours and hours, so it's always fun. Absolutely, talking to you, Ali. Nina. Absolutely, Ali. I fully agree. I mean, I have so much fun with you and Emma. Then just you know, I keep saying that I'm so comfortable talking about cricket on PTV World because. I feel we have some of the best discussions here on this platform. Yeah, we enjoy it. We enjoy it. And there's also no ego there. So it's, it's such an easy, it's uh, easy talking to you. It's a lot of fun. And of course, uh, I learn a lot as well. Uh, Lena, uh, Thank you, Pakistan, Ali. Pakistan in New Zealand. Uh, it'll be tough. I've been saying that time and time again. Yes, they've had some, uh, they've uh, had some scenario T20 games where uh, Shine Shah Afridi did very well. Babar Azam even scored some runs. Uh, that's all well and good. I mean, this is the best they can do right now. But they're going to have to adapt quickly. They're going to have to adapt very fast because this New Zealand team, particularly the bowlers, uh, this is probably one of the strongest, most balanced outfits I've seen from New Zealand. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've been talking about their outfit, the kind of side they have in test matches, in T20s also, uh, how well they've done in one-day internationals. And they are in their own backyard. So, yes, they're going to be formidable. Uh, how well they've done against the West Indies also recently. The second test just started. They're doing well again. So, you know, they're a complete side. They're fast bowlers. Four of them are so, you know, emphatic. emphatic. And they've got, you know, pace with Ferguson, uh, Guile and, you know, uh, real experience with Saudi and uh, Bold. And then they got Wagner who can you know, bang the ball in, keep pitching it short, keep taking the wickets. He can go on and on. And the, uh, one of the reasons he's famous is that he can bowl long spells really fast and keep coming at you. And he, he's the, you know, uh, he bangs the ball into the pitch and gets uh, uh, pace and bounce from it. And he's an excellent bowler. So they've got a complete bowling lineup. In the, they've got a good spinner also, which makes them a very balanced uh, uh, bowling lineup. And then in batting, they've got Williamson, they've got Kuptil, they've got the uh, likes of Latham who are very good. In the four shorter format, they've got new guys in Selfert and Philip uh, Phillips, and these guys who come in and doing well. 
added to the experience of Williamson and Guptill and you know these guys. So both the formats, with the white ball and the red ball, they are quite competent and be very hard to beat. Then comes the fact that their their pitches are a bit hard. They are a bit like England, but but little more uh, uh, bounce like Australia. So you know they're going to be there's going to be seam, there's going to be bounce, there's going to be some swing. Uh, the bowlers are great, so it's not not going to be easy for our, for our batsmen. Um, and if you speak of our, our bowlers, we've got some good bowlers, Shaheen Shah and the seam, and you know these guys. Uh, uh, we've got Wahab and we've got Shinwari. All these guys are good bowlers, but they're inexperienced. Our Bas is very good in those conditions. He might do better than anyone else. I feel like I mean the the key I feel is. Uh, in the hands of Shaheen Shah and uh, uh, and a boss and to a lesser lesser level in uh, uh, Bahabriya's hands. So we've got a balanced side also, but in batting we be largely depending upon um, the likes of Babar Azam and Azhar Ali, your experience who've done well. But then we've also got to learn to uh, bank on the newer guys like Abdullah Shafiq and Heather and Khushdil Shah and. You know, put a bit of pressure on these guys and tell them that you can do it here. Give them a bit of confidence. So it's a very interesting tour, and it won't be easy for Pakistan. We all know Pakistan uh, uh, will have to play out of their skins. The other thing I wanted to discuss, um, uh, Ali, uh, and it might have crossed your eyes also. You know, uh, is the article that Shan Masood wrote a very interesting piece on how. Um, there is life outside cricket how the uh, you know the sops once followed in new zealand it, it's a much easier country than say in england because once you do those two weeks in new zealand now our cricketers are free they can go out and can roam around they can see some sights they can Im- enjoy amongst their, uh, themselves you know walk around eat something go out to dinner maybe so he's but, Nina, there's a reason for that important yeah there's a reason for that, Lena, because New Zealand. I know it's a uh, it, it's a very small country, so it might be easier to handle. But Jacinda Ardern and her team, and the New Zealand Health Ministry, have handled it comparatively uh, very, very well. Uh, the world looks at New Zealand as an example of how they've handled uh, COVID-19. So um, if they were in uh, if they were in England or Jordan, yeah. I know Jordanians don't play cricket, but I just saw a news item of how the second wave is. Is really really bad in Jordan. Yeah, the circumstances would be different. But anyway, just a little bit about the Test matches before we go to uh, to the T20s. Now I'm going to name drop yeah. a bit here. Uh, uh, mm-hmm. I was uh, I met Mitch McClanagan during the uh, during the PSL, and around that time uh, India were in uh, New Zealand, and they weren't doing well at all. And with India's batting lineup, you expect them to do well over all over the world. But in New Zealand, they faced a lot of problems through Bold South, uh, Saudi and uh, the tall guy, uh, Jameson. Now, uh, and that's and I asked Mitch McClanagan about that. He said, well, you know, our wickets are really grassy. So the Indians are probably strugg- are struggling uh, with the grass. And I don't see <laughs> yeah. um, uh, the Pakistanis facing uh, anything different. I think uh, the wickets will, uh, will have a lot of moisture. Uh, there'll be a lot mm-hmm. of seam movement, and this is an inexperienced batting lineup, as you said. Babar Azam is someone that the Pakistanis rely heavily on. He doesn't have that mm-hmm. much Test experience. Azhar Ali is not mm-hmm. in the best of Nick, although he did make a hundred in England. It's mm-hmm. going to be really, really hard, particularly in the Test matches. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I agree. I mean, uh, facing those uh, that attack on uh, those kind of wickets wouldn't be easy and you mentioned the inexperience and you know Babar Azam uh, being uh, the top batsman and Azhar Ali I feel will have a big part to play because he has been the Pakistan captain he has been up uh, in this side he's the more most experienced batsman so he'll have to pitch in and the rest will have to sort of play around them uh, and it is an in, in experience and those tracks will also make a difference with the grass on it and the new ball. Um, so, you know, yeah, it wouldn't be easy, but we'll have to see see which other players other than Babar Azam and Azhar Ali would, uh, you know, sort of um, stick their hands up and say, OK, I'm here to do well in um, New Zealand and I'm going to make a hero out of myself. One of those names in test matches for me could be Shadab. Because I feel that he has done well in uh, these terrains. Uh, in the past, he's got five or six fifties in these uh, um, England and uh, uh, Australia and uh, South uh, New Zealand, I think, and uh, maybe in South Africa. I'm not too sure, but uh, he can do well. 
so i would play him maybe if they playing one spinner i would play him and make him you know flight the ball and give it more air and ask him to take wickets rather than to be flat uh, and then for him to play and roll at uh, number 6 or number 7 Uh, uh, wherever he sent in uh, those two numbers because i feel he can add, give pakistan that kind of fillip down the order so he will be other than the guys we mentioned uh, he will be an important person for me an important player down the order and he if he can bowl with a little bit of guile and flight and he can be a, uh, given a clear uh, role he could make a difference so yeah those would be interesting um, interesting matches and in the if you If we speak about New Zealand, I think the most dangerous in their batting lineup would be Williamson and uh, Latham. Latham for me is a big player. Yeah, uh, the T20s will uh, Pakistan uh, will will have a better chance. The last time they were there, they managed to mm. beat the New Zealanders two uh, one. Mm. And when you look at Pakistan's bowling attack, once again, that will be Pakistan's strength. Shaheen Shah is uh, mm. a, a magnificent bowler in all formats of the game, but mainly in. In 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 white ball cricket, Wahab Riaz, I think, as a, a sort of born again fast bowler, he's found new life. He's finding good areas now. He's becoming difficult to hit. Haris Rauf, talented, uh, but um, uh, but wayward. And these are small grounds, so even if a, a fast bowler or a spinner is a little bit off, they'll go the distance. And then mm. you, you mentioned Shadab Imad Wasim, who's one of the best in T20 cricket, very mm. accurate. So when you look at Pakistan's bowling attack, there's uh, there's a lot there's a lot to look forward to, quite a bit of variety. Absolutely, I agree with you. I mean, with all the bowlers you named, with the spin and the fast bowlers and the express pace of Rauf, I mean, we've got everything going for us. Uh, with Rauf, is uh, the thing is that he's express, so he will always go for runs like Shoaib Bakhtar did in. Uh, uh you know in the white ball format but his the key his role is to pick up wickets for instance if he bowls four overs and goes for 40 runs and picks you up three crucial wickets i feel he would have done his job uh, and you know that is his job uh, to pick up wickets and be aggressive and pack the when the chips are down uh, so if he does that he will be crucial for pakistan wahab riaz bowling brilliantly his job is also to pick up wickets with his aggression his act new found accuracy and he's uh, he's got good pace also lena sorry uh, to cut you off because we're running we're running short of time so i'm, I'm just trying to get uh, as many points in as possible uh, usman kadir he bowled well against the zimbabweans uh, and i know i mean this uh, the saint zimbabwe the new zealand in zimbabwe yeah. i understand that but um, i'd be interested to see how he goes because i feel like he's he's developed as a bowler he's got uh, quite a few tricks up his sleeve i'd be interested mm. to see uh, how he goes against the kiwis what about you Absolutely uh, um, agreed. I mean, you know, I feel the leg spinner is a captain's bowler. I often say that because he bowls well. If your, his captain gives him the confidence. With Yasser, we always saw, saw he bowled much better under Misbah because Misbah was his captain who gave him com- confidence, the right kind of field placing, talk to him often. So it'll be interesting how. Well, does uh, uh, Usman Kader do? He's done well against Zimbabwe, but this will be a crucial test for him on these wickets against those world-class batsmen uh, who will be uh, uh, going after him. And uh, it will it'd be interesting to see if, when he's going for runs, if he's being hit for fours and sixes, he'll be able to pick, uh, pick up those uh, crucial wickets. For me, once again, in his four overs, he goes for forty runs and picks you up two or three crucial wickets. That's good enough for me. But it will be interesting to see how he goes against those uh, top batsmen on their terrains and uh, of course new zealand uh, the batsmen will come uh, coming after him uh, uh, but but when you look at pakistan's batting again you know heavy reliance on uh, the captain uh, babar azam mm-hmm. the rest of them i'm not so sure i mean there's no fakhar zaman i'm a big fan of uh, fakhar's unfortunately yeah. he's not there so I, I mean, I'm trying to. I, I'm trying to think of some others. Yes, Heather Ali, uh, extremely mm-hmm. talented, but but inexperienced. I mean, how much can you expect from him uh, right now? But let's hope he clicks in New Zealand. The boundaries are small, so his miss hits might uh, might clear the boundary. But other than those two names, I'm trying to think of a batsman who, who and Hafiz. I beg your pardon, Mohammad Hafiz was in fantastic form. But if these guys don't yeah. perform, it, it, it's going it's going to be very difficult. Yeah, well, you know, cricket is a team sport. Everyone's got to pitch in. I'd be looking at guys like Kushdeer Shah and Shadab, 
to pitch in down the order. I'd be very interested to see where they bat Shadab and if they play Rizwan, if they bat him up the order because Rizwan is not going to be effective down the order. If they say play Sarfaraz, then yes, or down the order he could be good for Pakistan. Uh, players like Kushtel Shah and players like Shadab Khan would be very important to me. They will have to pitch in for Pakistan to uh, say reach a score of 180 on those wickets and if then to sort of contain uh, the opposition with their bowling which has got a lot of variety or if they are chasing uh, do they have the capability the ammunition uh, in the shape of uh, Khushdel and Heather and uh, uh, say Shadab Khan these yeah. players would be have to be given roles and they'll have to do well I mean, if you want to sort of lengthen your, your your batting order or add more balance to your team maybe that's a better way of putting it I'd open with mm -hmm. one of the keepers I'd think about that Maybe if you play yeah, Rizwan, open with Rizwan or open absolutely. with Sarfaraz Ahmed. I mean, it's not alien to, to them because Rizwan did open in the national yeah. T20s. Or did he? I don't remember. Yeah. I, or am I having a... No, no, he, he did. He did. He did in, in the national T20 and he did really well. Uh, did, yeah. uh, uh, you know, b batting in the power play is where he can excel. I have been saying that if you give him... Say if he comes down the order and he's asked to chase 12 runs and over, he wouldn't be able to do uh, do it. Let me be plain and simple, he wouldn't be able. But if you back him up as, a, as an opener and give him those power play overs where he can get his shots in the gap and get those crucial runs under his belt, then he can even chase 10 to 12 runs if by then he has 30-40 runs under his belt. But asking him to chase, come down the order and chase, straight away chase, uh, 12 runs and over or 10 runs, it won't be easy for him. So I'm 100% right. with you. If they want to play Rizwan, he should be asked to play, uh, asked to open. If they want to play Sarfaraz, he can even come down the order. Yeah, but Matty Wade and KL Rahul, that's what they did. Uh, in, uh, the mm. Australians open with Wade and the Indians with Rahul. Yeah. So not an alien concept. Uh, we're going to leave it at not that. At Lina Moinaziz, thank you very much for joining us. Anytime. My pleasure. Pleasure having you on. We'll be back after a short break. When we come back, we'll discuss sailing in Pakistan. Stay tuned.